You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Ed Astra. So let's go ahead and jump right back in, guys. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes. Let me entertain you and let's go. Armchan, you're up. Let's do it. All right. <clears throat> okay, let's do it. Okay. But he continues on like he didn't even notice my pause, like he always does. Anyway, despite the competition, I still consider you a friend and I hope you feel the same. Maybe we can have lunch in the garden soon, no matter the result? Yeah. Let's do that. Wonderful. We sit in silence for another ten minutes, ten or so minutes, watching as Amicus finishes his horn playing, and Cassius takes the spotlight again to begin singing. It's actually just howling. Cass's head leaned back, muzzle tipped toward the ceiling, looking just like a wolf on Earth as it howls to the moon. I think he's saying words, but I can't really understand, especially with the odd high-pitched tone it has. Meanwhile, a little gauge pops up in the bottom screen, a needle going back and forth with the pitch of the howl. They want that indicator to stay in the middle. It represents better control over their song. It's short. Only a few minutes before it's Amicus's turn, doing much the same as Cassius except his howl is deeper, fuller. A lot better, I think. I also think that the needle stays in the middle more often than it had for Cassius, but I'm not sure. Toward the end of the Amicus's song, Com's voice crackles gently over our heads. Alex, Killian, the dance begins in five minutes. Please proceed to the throne room doors. My harp skips a beat as we both stand up, Alex leading the way to the hall. I wonder if he's nervous, too. Even though he looks calm, his tail lashes back and forth as we walk. I don't try to talk to him, feeling like we're both a little preoccupied with our, with our own thoughts right now. We get to the big double doors and wait side by side. Alex's paws are folded neatly in front of himself, so I do the same. I try to breathe evenly. I've never been good in front of big crowds, and even though it's technically only Cato in there... I can't forget the fact that millions of people are going to be watching. Dance trial begins in five, four, three, two. Ooh. The doors slide open and I find myself staring into a darkened throne room, the windows deeply tinted so that they only, so only a vague hint of sunlight comes through. I immediately see Amica straight ahead of me, bathed in a bright spotlight. The same can be said for Cassius, about ten meters to his right. Cato sits on the throne, just like in my dream. I also notice Virginia Nef and Neferu sitting next to each other on one of the benches. That alone makes me even more nervous, but then a voice comes over the PA. Excuse me. Not calm, but someone else sounding old and frail. Presenting Pet Alexios from Moon Amorpha, and Pet Killian from Planet Simia. Amicus and Cassius reach out one paw, and Alex starts to walk toward forward on his toes, looking light and sophisticated. I quickly follow suit, trying to sort, sort of mimic his walk. I had never practiced my entrance with Amicus. I start to wonder if I'm even more underprepared for this than I thought I was. No time to think about that now. I do the best that I can with my stupid prancing walk before coming to a stop in front of Amicus, reaching out a hand to rest in his big paw. He smiles reassuringly, down at me, and for some reason his presence makes me a little less nervous than I had been while waiting alone for the trial to start. We stand there quietly for a moment, but then that old voice starts up again, but now it's in a howl, high, wavering, and faint. Explorant! Adver! Vero! He starts to recite the story in the same how, but it's hard to hear, and now that there are words... Wait, I can't understand it. He's speaking? Oh, fuck. The lingua isn't translating the song. Immediately, I start to panic as I see Amicus raise up his paw. I probably have a look of horror on my face because his reassuring smile has turned to a frown. Jerkly, I raise up my hand to touch it with the wolf's paw, trying to stay calm. I can do this. Sure. I attached a lot of the movements to the words in the song, but I remember the order of the poses, I think. Still, the unexpected blunder has me flustered and stumbling, my movements hesitant and definitely unelegant. I'm so frazzled that I don't really have time to dwell on the fact that Amic Alex and Cassius are doing the dance at the same time. Are we competing for Kato's and, and, and watching the Triumvirate's attention? Are we competing for Kato's and the watching Triumvirate's attention? I tried to face, stay focused on Amicus, watching his movements, hoping that I might remember enough on his cues to get through all the movements correctly. Oh dear. Poor Killian. My falling apart must be affecting Amicus as well. His brow furrowed in confusion. His movements also becoming slower, more hesitant. Fuck! I, th I think I feel sweat running down my face, probably turning my striped makeup into a streaked mass. Streaked mess. Several times I'm caught staring at Amicus, unsure of what to do until I look over at Alex to see what he's doing. 
The cat looks totally in his element, stretching and elongating his body luxuriously in tandem with Cassius. The wolf isn't bad himself, taking the clear lead in the dance as he dips and sways with Alex's body. Meanwhile, I fumble around with Amicus, watching as the powder on my sweaty arm smears on his fur, leaving long, black smudges on his chest and arms. Finally, we get to Mira's death, and at least I know when this was some... At least I know when this is supposed to happen because I see Amicus reach out dramatically for me. This is the only moment in the entire dance that I feel confident in what I'm doing, and I put everything into my swoon, but so does Alex. Oh. Amicus is already next to me to catch me before I start to fall, but Alex swoons while Cassius is still meters away from him, but the other wolf smoothly glides to his side to catch him. Alex lays there in Cassius' arms, splayed out dramatically, looking somehow serene and distressed at the same time. The spotlight almost makes the pair glitter, and even I feel like there's a good deal of chemistry between the two of them. There had been a small but definite hope on my end that Alex might help us out here, maybe throw in the dance in our favor with a fall or stumble, but it looks like he's putting everything into the performance. Cassius, despite his reputation of being weak, looks strong and confident, easily supporting Alex's weight as the cat dips further toward the ground. At the same time, the wolf's howl reaches a new pitch, the climax of the story, and that's when Alex turns his head to Cassius for a deep, passionate kiss. Oh my. Even though Mira is supposed to be gone at this point, Alex reaches up to caress Cassius' face, pulling him deeper. Meanwhile, their bodies press closely together, Cassius very clearly grinding his hips against the cat's, that paw that's now supporting Alex's Alex instead running up his thigh. Before dipping under Alex's underwear, pushing itself pushing it up until most of the cat's thigh is showing. And they just writhe against each other like that, as if caught in throes of passion. The movement of their muzzles telling me that a lot is going on past those lips. The entire act stuns me, almost making me forget about the disaster that her own dance had been. Cassius turns, carrying Alex with him as he faces them in the other direction. Never breaking the kiss. In fact, their groping and grinding get even more intense. He's giving everyone a good look at what's happening. It, with the, if the whole idea of the dance is to capture attention and make the story and feeling and believe feelings believable, well, I believe them. In fact, I believe there's a lot more going on between the two than I'd originally thought. It might explain why Alex wouldn't want to hurt Cassius's chances of being emperor. Maybe my hopes that Alex would help us were completely naive. That's when I some suddenly snap back to reality as I hear Amicus grunt above me. I'd been so enamored with Cassius and Alex's kiss that I'd forgotten our own. Seeing a preview of what I might have to do with Amicus, though, I blush, sealing myself, getting ready as the wolf starts to lean down toward me, his lips puckered up slightly. I write in my own lips, but then suddenly Amicus turns his head to the side slightly, landing the kiss on my cheek instead. It's soft and fleeting, and before I know it, Amicus is pulled back before gently lowering me to the cold marble below. I recognize the word at, at, the word at Astra and the howl before everything was, goes quiet. I hear Alex getting up just a few feet away, so I do the same, Amicus quickly hurrying over to help me up in my dress. It's only then do I see the various drones floating around above us, the attached lenses making me realize that they're cameras. I quickly duck my head, not wanting the people to see the smeared, offensive makeup on my face. Amicus holds me close to his side, not saying anything, thankfully. Cassius continues to look straight ahead, and I can see Alex glancing at us, looking confused. Then Calm's voice. The Triumvirates have made their decisions. Boy, this is giving me some good thumbnail material. Lupus. Cassius. Adrote. Cassius. Lux. Cassius. Jebi. Cassius. Triselli. Cassius. Ad Astra. The camera drone swivels to focus on Cato. He shifts on his throne before grunting out his answer. Cassius. The trial has been decided. Cassius is the victor. There's a moan of stunned silence, and the window is untent, and the camera drones the camera drones lazily drift away up into some ceiling compartment. I left standing there looking around at the others. Cato is walking down the steps from the throne in the direction of Cassius. And meanwhile, Virginia is whispering to Nefero behind a fan he's wa he's casually waving into her face. Cassius is petting Alex's head, murmuring to him under his breath. Finally, Amicus stands awkwardly to my side, not even looking at me, his paws behind his back and his eye on Cato. I suddenly realize again how stupid I look. Can I go change? I mumbled to Amicus, keeping my voice low like everyone else, as if we're in a library or something. Um, sure. Do you want... I don't let him finish. I'm walking as fast as I can to the double doors, knowing that everyone's eyes are on my back as I pause to touch the black panel. Once I'm in the main hall, I'm able to breathe a little easier, starting to feel the anger coming up to the absolute humiliation. I don't know exactly what I'm angry at. Not Amicus, even though he maybe should have, ha should have had an idea that howls don't translate. 
It's not Kato or the Triumvirates. They made the right decision. Ooh, excuse me. I've been a complete disaster out there. I guess I'm just mad at this whole system. Ooh, excuse me. Got some air in my throat. <clears> throat> Ugh, that the responsibility of getting home rests on me just as much as the guy that got me here in the first place. It isn't fair. So I guess I'm pissed at Amicus in a way. The anger is a lot broader than that. I'm angry at the entire situation. I go straight to the bathroom, roughly trying to yank off the stupid dress. It's tight around my neck, and I spend the next minute doing an awkward dance, trying to find the buttons on the back so I can loosen it. Eventually, I just rip it off before wiggling out of the dress, feeling a little guilty only after I see the beautiful fabric crumpled up on the ground. I stand there, breathing heavily, sweaty and hot. I look in the mirror, and I'm a little surprised to see the makeup still mostly intact on my face. Which reminds me, I'm also pissed. I'm also pissed that the first time I got paraded out in public, it's in a racist costume and makeup. I get in the shower, letting the hot water run over my face, feeling a little better now that I'm alone with my thoughts and out of a tight dress. Still, my mood is a bit dark. I guess now I can actually start to consider that I might be living here forever. Well, my mind re initially rejects the idea. I guess it's not the worst fate. I'll at least be living in a palace with Amicus, and I know he'd take care of me. At least I think he would. Maybe this whole pet thing is temporary, and if he loses the trials, he'll just throw me out with the trash, maybe kill me like he'd once mentioned on his ship. Under my gloomy contemplations, though, I know that's, th that's not the case. He wouldn't do that, but I can't promise myself that I'd be able to keep friendly with him if things really do go south. He told me this would be easy so many times. Even if the lingua hadn't messed up, I doubt we still would have won. After a good half hour, I finally get out of the shower. I stand in front of the fans for a bit, enjoying the way it whips my hair around before I pick up some underwear off the hook and tie it on. Ugh, that's, I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty fast at doing that now, not even having to think about it. Finally, I open the door. The cool air that rushes in is refreshing after such a hot shower, but I'm immediately treated to the sight of Amicus walking away from the door, probably in the middle of pacing. He immediately, he immediately turns around at the sound, though, his eyes wide. Hey, Gillian, how are you? Great. I walk over to the dresser, opening the one that's full of children's robes. Really? Sure. I hear Amicus huff behind me. Please, I don't want to have to deal with that mood of yours right now. I just want to talk. That's fair, but him telling me to stop sulking is just making me sulkier. You know, I would have loved to just to talk, like, a week ago about this stupid trial. Imagine how much better it would have gone if I'd actually memorized the dance rather than just following cues from you in the song. What about a robe? Which, by the way, isn't a song. You always make fun of Earthlings in our primitive ways, but at least we actually have a variety of music. Oh, and we can actually sing. Not those creepy howling sounds that sound like you're dying. Amicus frowns at me, his ears flat. You're upset. No, what made you think that? Stop it, Killian. I'm just as upset and disappointed as you, should probably, as you probably are. Was it the cameras? Maybe Kato that made you nervous. What happened? I'm quiet for a moment as I start trying trying on my robe. Then suddenly Amicus' paw, Amicus paw reaches out, grabbing my right hand and yanking it away from my clothing. What? What happened to your paw? I look up and see the wolf staring at the palm of, at the palm side of my hand with wide, with wide eyes before turning it this way and that. What? Your skin, it's, it's bunching up. Are you having a reaction to the powder? I stare at him, confused before pulling my hand away to look at my pruny fingers. No, it's just I was in the shower too long. My skin does that when I'm wet for a long time. I've never noticed that before. You take short showers. The wolf frowns at me and snatches my hand up again to stare at the fingers in fascination. Even as I try to yank it back. At that point, I feel my mood about to take a turn in one of, one of two directions. Either exploding at amicus and frustration and anger over everything, or just laughing. I find myself doing the latter, chuckling at my at first before letting out a loud guffaw. Amicus gives me a strange look, finally letting me go. Are you sure you're alright? You're worrying me. I sigh as I finish, trying on my robe before flopping back onto the bed, hands above my head as I let the pleasant cool air drift down from the ceiling to the blanket to blanket my body. I know I'm going to get cold in a few minutes, but for now it feels good. Remember how you said the lingua has trouble translating some things? Yes, I... I hear the wolf pause as he figures out what went wrong. Heard nothing but wailing Latin and that howling, no howling noise. I had no idea what I was doing. Oh, gods. There's a heavy thump and I feel the mattress crater to it and tilt sideways a bit as Amicus sits down next to me. So, yeah. Killian, I'm so sorry. I didn't even contemplate that possibility. It's fine. I don't think either of us could have. 
I mean, I've listened to music from the cats before, and I've never had any issues with lyrics translating. I shrug. I don't know, doesn't the lingua try to understand intention, too? Maybe I meant to hear the true language when you guys sing. It was happening while you were doing your song, even though I didn't realize it. Oh, you heard me sing? I can hear the embarrassment in Amicus's voice. Yeah, it sounded fine, honestly. It was I was just being a dick earlier. I know. But still, I'm tired of you trashing on human culture. I know. And I knew that makeup was offensive, by the way. I looked at it, I looked like an idiot for all of that Astra to see. You look good. I turned my head toward the wolf. Oh, really? Fumbling around like an idiot with no clue of what he's doing looks good. Amicus stays quiet this time. I stare back up at the ceiling. I guess at least I'm keeping up the dumb primitive ape act, right? Amicus just sighs, getting up. I watch as he slowly walks over to the sofa to sit down. I have to say that although you are very kind, you are a very kind, intelligent person. You're very frustrating when you get into these moods. Frustrating? Just so gloomy and self-defeating. You remind me of Cassia sometimes. I pull a face. Since when is he self-defeating? He seems pretty full of himself to me. You don't know the real Cass. He very much dislikes himself. Also, don't compare me to your brother. I really don't want to be thinking about him right now. I'm just saying I prefer you in lighter spirits. It suits you more. I'll work on it. A long silence goes by, and with the way that Amicus is shifting around, I can tell that he wants to ask me something. One second, guys. Okay. What is it? Well, uh, I guess that little celebration is out of the question now. The dinner? Um... I sit up suddenly, giving him an incredulous look. Seriously? Whoa, I was just kidding. We just lost the trial. You're one trial away from losing the Emperorship, and you're seriously thinking about that? I was just having a bit of fun. No, you want a pity handy. It's not like I need you to do it. I can get the job done myself. Then do it. I will. Oh, God, I like children. Amicus sits there huffily, not making eye contact. I sigh, remembering what the wolf had said about improving my mood. I often criticize Amicus for his tantrums, reminding him reminding him that I won't help that it won't help us to sulk. It's kind of hypocritical that I don't hold myself to the same standards. Sorry, I've just got a lot on my mind, obviously. Listen, I know this went with, I know this went much differently than what we had planned, but I will certainly win the next trial. I've debated Cassius many times before. Do I have to do anything? Other than watch? No. When is it? Two weeks from now. You better win. I will. I sigh again, realizing that the knot I've, that a knot I've had in my stomach the past few weeks was a bit has a, has a bit longer to stick around. And I might still make a jacking motion in the air. Later on, I'm just not in the right state of mind right now. I understand. It was too early to make light of things, though uh, maybe we could do something else that would make us both feel better. Something else? Yes, like I could just hold you? Amicus's voice gets uncharacteristically high on the last word. Hold you? <laughs> Hold me. I repeat his words. Why would you want to do that? Well, companionship is part of our pet, pet part of pet duties, and holding or embracing is often how it is expressed. It might also be comforting to see you, considering how stressful the past few hours have been. All right, I'm gonna pause it right there. Ooh, we got a juicy thumbnail in today's video. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!